You ready? Yeah. Sorry. Still my care and me to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage. Yeah, so I'm just uh, turning 54 next month. So still a youngster with... Uh, but I'm looking to retire and then move into acting professionally. Proportioned as one's mind would wish a man. I now work as a system engineering manager for NATS, which is the National Air Traffic Services. Puling full of whining mammoths in her fortune's tender. Um, about 2004, they sent me to Spain for six months. To answer, I'll not wed. I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me, but... A friend of the family was directing a show in Madrid and he was short of actors and someone suggested, put forward my name, said, oh, Andrew can act. I thought, yeah, there'd been like a gap of 20, 30 years, but I was like, okay. Would you be sitting down a minute there for yourself now, Eileen? I have news to be telling you. I've just brought the two McCormacks home. Yeah, so my aim now is, uh, yeah, the thing that I'm really passionate about, it's not the work I do every day, which, you know, in the air traffic control side of the world, it is, uh, it is about the acting. So I'm now preparing myself for when I retire to start working full-time professionally. It's a little bit early for me. You know, I need another year or two at work just to see kids finally through their education and everything. Um, so I may do the follow-on course next year, or I may just, you know, start doing small pieces of uh, professional work on top of the amateur work as well. Well, it'd only be a minor role, aye. But it'd still be a good part, you know. Although, there's more important things in the world than good parts in Hollywood films about cripple fellas. About 27 years ago now, I've been at the same company. It's quite, you know, a long time in one place. Yeah, there's ambition and you know, the money and you want a better lifestyle, so you do other things. But once I got back into acting again while, when I was out in Madrid, um, then I realised what I really wanted to do. It's a, yeah, the, t the two kids I've got really proud of, you know, Daniel and Maria. So Daniel has just started work teaching now down in Southampton. And my daughter Maria has got one year to go at uh, university in Guildford at Surrey University. And of course, the other day I got married as well, been very lucky. We have been married 29 years now. Um, the greatest achievements, I think, is you know, bringing up the family, really. You know, the, the, the children, that's, that's got to be the, the top one. When I found out I had cancer, I had to, you know, testicular cancer. Um, the GP had taken so long to actually agree there was a problem that by the time I got to the consultant, you know, very quickly removed the, the tumour, but by then I had secondary tumours in the lungs. Um, so I was facing, you know, I had chemo for five months, you know, whereas mo at least half the time I was in hospital. The thing that really upset me was thinking about the children who, my daughter was one year old at the time, my son was about three, um, and it was the thought of them growing up without a father. Because when you hear the big C word, you know, can see, you think you're going to die. It was almost a shock in itself to me that I wasn't upset for myself, I was upset that idea of them growing up without their dad. If there's nothing I can do about something, if it's really out of my control, then there's no point worrying about it. You know, some people, for example, are scared of flying and they're absolutely panicked and, you know, my wife's not a good flyer and, you know, I've got the fingernail marks in my arms to prove it. Whereas for me, I'm thinking, well, the pilot's in control of the aircraft, I can't do anything, so I'm going to go to sleep and just hope I wake up at the other side. fellas. Being around your family and your friends is more important. And I tried to tell Cripple Billy that, but he wouldn't listen to me no matter how much I told him. Uh, I'm in a different part. situation. I'm not, I'm not some 21-year-old who's just come out of drama school and only ever worked with people my own age and uh, and it's, the, it's their bread and butter, it's their, it's their lifeline. If they're not doing that, they're working, you know, selling burgers or working in supermarkets, sh stacking shelves. I don't have that worry when I'm retired. I can almost be choosy and say, well, I'm not doing that, yeah? Yeah, that, that's something, yeah, there might be some genre or some sort of silly type of commercial, not that I'm really, I've done commercials before, but um, I would say, no, I don't wanna do that, I'm not gonna make myself look silly. I'll, I'll do things I enjoy. And if, if I don't find enough work, 
then I know from what I've done before with rugby and businesses, I'll, I'll set up my own thing. No, it's not all going to work out, but, but I'm going to have fun trying, trying to get it done. Yeah. I'll, I'll do what I can. As, as long as I think I'm doing my best and I'm achieving something, and I've always got something to aim for. I don't think anyone could be perfect. I think you always have to strive to, to improve.